Well, that, that reminds me of, um, uh, I remember the name of the, uh, I guess it was the Keystone Pipeline, but the um, uh, with Standing Rock, right? Was it that 2016? I can't remember exactly when that was. It was a few years ago uh, when that, that really happened. And I remember whatever the corporation was that was in charge of building that pipeline that wanted to build through that, that uh, area. Uh, their whole thing was like, our safety record is good enough. Like, you know, occasionally we have spills, but it's fine. We manage them well. And then you actually look at the real data that's not from them. And you realize it happens much more frequently than than they will even admit. And that's what's so, like, disturbing about it is is how damaging every pipeline is. I mean, just the fact that you're building something like that is already disruptive. And then the fact that it's, you know, you have basically a toxic... Uh, liquid, a toxic substance that's being transferred through that, and inevitably, at some point, it may be a uh, you know who knows what time frame we're looking at, but over time, that's going to leak. There's going to be something that's going to happen, and you're talking about a very fragile um, ecosystem. You're talking about a, a place that these people have you know created space for, basically, or allowed for it to thrive and exist as a pristine environment for salmon to to thrive and exist in and other of other non-human beings as well to exist and thrive in as well. And you realize how absolutely sacred that work is and how the interests of a pipeline or the state of Canada really does not even come close to to the value that these people and this territory is providing for everybody, really. I think that's what people don't seem to understand is this sort of disconnection that we tend to have from the land and from these non-human beings that are, they have every right to exist. And yet we place, you know, our, our right to have certain kinds of resources above everything else. And it's, it, it's just absolutely insane. Um, it's an insane culture that produces this kind of mindset. I just wanted to comment on that, but yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you're totally right. And I, I, there, there. You, you said something that I think is really important. You, you said it there, something along the lines. I can't remember your exact words, but the Unistoten camp are is doing something for everyone. Um, and I think there's, there's so many, there's so many layers to that. The, the first and and maybe most obvious one is in, in, in a, uh, in a time when. Uh, we know that the combustion of fossil fuels is is pushing uh, the planet literally to um, to a place where where life may not be able to to go on, where life support systems are are the collapse of these life support systems are intensifying daily. Um, you know that anytime someone anyone anytime someone can prevent one of these big projects from happening, they're doing something for the whole world. But then there's another there's another aspect to what they what they what they've done at the Unistone camp, and that is that um, the one of the one of the big things that they always emphasized at the camp was that it going to the going to the Unistone camp was was really an educational experience for people who went up there, especially for um, I think especially for people who have lost connection to their land because you go to go up to the Unistone camp and to to um, to experience what life was like before um, before we we started burning fossil fuels what life was like before you you know you woke up and reached to reach for your phone next to your bed or before you um, dreaded you know getting your coffee and going in to answer emails. Um, what, what life was really like, um, for, for most all humans, for the vast majority of, of human history. And, um, you know, to, to going to the Unistoten camp, um, you, you go there usually, at least the way I went there, uh, was for different call out for calls out for volunteers. And, um, you know, you, you, you sleep before the bunkhouse was built, uh, we slept in tents um, it, out in the woods. Basically, um, you you wake up every morning to the sounds of a of a of a relatively healthy forest all around you. Uh, the you know the, one of the first things you have to do when you wake up in the morning is someone has to um, take these big 
um, you know, 15 gallon containers down to the river to fill them up because the first thing you need in the morning for everything is water. Someone has to, has to get the fire going to, to, so people can start to make breakfast. Um, and you, you start to get into this very, I, I think a very natural rhythm of, of the way that, um, humans have always lived. And there's something happened to me when I was up there. I, I, I really felt, it's one of the most peaceful times I've ever had. Um, despite some of those days working 12 and 14 hour days of manual labor, um, to just to, just to wake up in the morning in a, in a forest, uh, to, to just take care of really your very, very, um, basic human needs, water and food, and then to go to work, not, um, not for someone else to make some profit for someone else and you not answering the, the work bell or not, uh, you know, not, uh, going to work, um, because you're forced to, because you have to support yourself, but going, going to work for a community, um, that is doing the right thing. And that, uh, is truly a community. Um, it, it, it felt like, I felt like I had fallen into place. Like that's, that's what, you know, this is what humans are supposed to do. And, um, it, it was an incredibly powerful experience. So not only was the, is the Unistoten camp blocking pipelines, they're teaching people how humans are supposed to live. And, um, you know, I don't know the, you know, indigenous peoples around the world are, um, Obviously, you know, they, they're, they're being eradicated and slowly but surely we're losing um, we're losing our memories of of our traditions. You know, for for me as a as a white American of um, Irish and German ancestry, um, I, I just went to Ireland for the first time a, uh, a year ago. And while they do remember a lot of their traditions um from uh, the last thousand years or so after they became civilized, we just don't, we just don't know how, how we lived, um, before civilization happened. And when we lose examples like that, how are we ever going to remember? How are we, um, you know, it, it, you don't even know once, once you lose your memory of something, you don't even know that it's gone.